Hello and welcome to another Mission Models video installment. We do everything here on the fly, nothing scripted. Today we're going to show the workflow of using Mission Models Primer, Mission Models Paint, using the Mission Models Poly Mix Additive Thinner, cleaning the airbrush, and we'll be using two different airbrushes today. The Harderstein Beck Evolution with a 0.2 needle nozzle, and we'll be using the Harderstein Beck Infinity using a 0.15 needle nozzle. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Ravel Germany uh, 30 second scale BF 109 G series. Okay, it's obviously just a half a fuselage because that's all we need for the demonstration. And we're gonna prime it. So we're gonna take the mission models MMS 003 gray primer. And as per our instructions and tech support, we are gonna add 40 drops, 30 to 40 drops of primer. And we've got the mission models thinner. This is the four ounce thinner MMA 003. All right. So what we're going to do in a one ounce epoxy mixing cup, which we like to use and highly recommend them. It's just easy for mixing and measuring and so forth. We're going to add about six drops of thinner. And we're just going to mechanically stir it up. The thinner is what activates our primer, makes it work the way it does. So you can see the consistency. Next, we're going to take our harder Steenbeck Evolution with a 0.2. Now, we know that people have all sorts of different airbrushes. It really doesn't matter what kind you have. But again, we're using a 0.2, but you can use a 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.4. It really doesn't matter. We just happen to be using these. We've got our, our hose. We like to use a Mac valve here, micro air control valve, so we can adjust our air pressure uh, at the hose. We set our compressor at about 20 PSI and we crack the, uh, the, the valve open and typically spray between 10 and 15 PSI. Uh, Mission Models uh, paints and primers are designed to spray at a lower PSI. We like to remove the crown cap or the air cap. Uh, and this is, goes for all airbrushes because a lot of times what can happen is paint can build up inside the crown cap and uh, when it builds up inside there, eventually with that build up, the air can start throwing droplets out of the crown cap and then end up on your model. Uh, when you spray without a crown cap, your needle, which you probably can't see here in the video, will be exposed. So you want to be careful not to drag the needle across the work or across a piece of paper because you will bend it. Okay, so take our airbrush, got our primer, we're just going to pour it in here. Okay. What I like to do is just close the Mac valve, right, all the way. Got zero air, uh, there's no paint coming through. I'm gonna crack it open, always test. All right, that's open about a quarter, give or take. And now we're just gonna prime. You always wanna spray about two to three inches away from the work, a nice, even, methodical passes, okay? Just like that. Nice, light, wet coats. See how it's kind of shiny there? That's a light, wet coat. Our primers will dry. They will not hide any details. They'll dry like a second skin, nice and durable. So, any spots that we missed, we'll hit those. All right, that's all there is to it. That's covered. Look at all that primer, okay? Look at all this primer we still have. You can mix less if you want. We just like a starting point of 30 to 40 drops of primer or paint, because it kind of gives you something to work with. However, we still have wings. We have the other half of the fuselage. You know, there's a lot of parts. This primer will last a long time. So you could, in theory, prime all your parts with the rest of this. Oh, hey, no, I didn't see you there. Let's have a nice little cup of coffee. And we're back here with our model. Again, this is a 30 second scale Gravel Germany uh, BF 109 G6. We've just uh, primed uh, half this fuselage. You can see the, uh, the nice smooth eggshell finish. We've let this naturally dry. Uh, we sprayed it on again in light wet coats between, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 PSI. 
and uh, by applying in lightweight coats, you'll get that nice eggshell finish, nice and smooth. We can, in theory, if you needed to, you can go in and dry sand this. You can do anything you want with it. All right, so the next step is we are going to spray uh, MMP number 51, um, RLM 76. Again, we're gonna use our Harder Scene Beck uh, uh, Evolution with a point two. All right, so let's get going here, nice and quick. We'll be adding the polyurethane mix additive to it and some thinner. So again, as per our instructions, we give you a, uh, a basic starting point. Okay, so let's say 30 drops of paint. And you could have even, you can go 40 if you need to, but 30 drops of paint. And we've got our thinner, MMA003. This is the four ounce. There's also an MMA002, which is two ounce. All right, and we're gonna add about six drops of thinner. All right, so there's your consistency. Our thinner is technically a very high-end reducer, but we just call it thinner, and it'll break the paint down very, very fast. There's no shelf life on the uh, on the paint. We don't pre-thin anything. That way, there's no inconsistencies or uh, paint that's kicked over prematurely. Now we've got our uh, Mission Models MMA001 polyurethane mix additive. Okay, what the mix additive does is it increases your durability and uh, adhesion properties. You can use, you know, it's optional. You don't have to use it. We put it into everything that we spray. So I'm going to add, we've got 30 drops of paint. We've got about six drops of thinner. Now I'm going to add two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Paint is very, very forgiving. Even though we say six drops, let's say you have 30 drops of paint, you can go up to 12 drops of, of, of poly. It's not gonna hurt anything. But like I said, we give you a nice starting point. All right, so there's our, there's our consistency. Again, same exact airbrush. We're gonna close the Mac valve, open it back up. About a quarter of a turn. All right, always test before you shoot your model, okay? Make sure your spray pattern's good. Make sure there's no residual thinner or water in the chamber of the airbrush. Just because it looks clean in the, in the cavity, you wanna make sure that you have nothing extra in the chamber. All right, so, ready? Here we go. Again, same principle. Nice, light, wet coats, about two to three inches from the work. nice broad coverage so again you know nice lightweight coats methodical passes this is for broad coverage because we're just getting a base there all right again you can see the light wet coats and again we're just going kind of quick all right so we're out of paint there with the amount of paint that we've got left over you can still spray uh, the other half of the fuselage and you know various other parts um, You know, this is pretty much an underside color. So, you know, whatever it is that you need to do So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the airbrush again. Let's show you how quickly we can clean the airbrush So let's get over here to the uh, cleaning station All right again, we've got our spray bottle Nice and quick Okay Basically, get the bulk of it out of there. That's just water. Okay, There's just a Q-tip. Just kind of got anything out of the edges there. So we've got the bulk of it out. Now again, we'll take thinner, just in the chamber there, kind of swirl it around. Just, just a few drops in there. That's all it really is. This thinner will go a long way. Spray a little through. clean. That's it. Needle's clean. Just try and get rid of any residual water or thinner that's in there. That's it. Let's go to the next color. All right. So we've basically cleaned our airbrush and now we're going to move on and we're going to spray some RLM 74 Grau Grun. Okay. That's number MMP048. Now remember, this 
uh, demonstration is not about accuracy and uh, meaning an accurate paint scheme. We have some reference uh, that's sort of, you know, out of the frame here that we'll loosely follow. What we're gonna do is we're gonna this time use the Infinity, well the Harder Steenbeck Infinity with a .15 uh, needle nozzle. That's about as fine as you can get. And again, we've got our hose with our Mac valve, all right? So before we start spraying, we're gonna mix the paint and uh, we'll bring the airbrush back here in a second. So, basically, 30 drops of paint. All right, there's 30 drops of paint. Thinner. We're gonna add six drops, seven drops. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, mechanically stir it up. That's all you gotta do. Poly, MMA001 Poly. I'm gonna add six drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, and let's just put one more, seven. Okay. Stir it up. That's all there is to it. That's all you gotta do. All right? Just make sure everything's sort of emulsified in there, thoroughly mixed. You can take a mixing stick, stir it up a bit, it's fine. Got our airbrush here. All right, we're gonna close the Mac valve as we discussed before. We're gonna remove the crown cap, okay? Remember, here's the crown cap. This is the style that Harder Steenbeck gives you. Just pull it right off. Remember, now your needle's exposed. If you drag the needle across the work or the piece of paper while you're testing or painting, you will bend the needle. So please, be cautious. If you're not comfortable removing the crown cap while spraying, just leave it on. Got our paint. right into the cavity there, all right? And we're gonna crack it open just a little bit. Let's just test first. We have a little bit of residual water and thinner in there, so we'll spray that through, all right. Let's test it. Dots. Sure you're happy with your spray pattern. If your needle is bent at all, you will get overspray. A bent needle or a damaged nozzle will give you problems. It'll give you overspray and potential clogging, okay? So always make sure that your needle and your nozzle are in good shape, okay? So, again, one more quick test before we actually get to the model. I'm gonna adjust that just a little bit more, add a little bit more air pressure. nice and clean. So let's go. Let's apply your air first. As we pull back, we get a wider spray pattern. All right, I'm gonna... Now when you go from paper, which is absorbent, to your model, which has a slick surface, you may have a slightly the paint may hit the model slightly different, so you may have to just adjust your air pressure. This is a point 0.15. For those of you that use microns, those are point 0.18 and point 0.23. Virtually no overspray. Now we're on an angle, so we may get a little bit, and I'm on an angle so I don't block the view. Okay, now we're gonna bring it down here. I'm gonna just give a little, one more little test. I'm gonna turn down my air pressure at the Mac valve just a little bit more. Always gonna wanna adjust as needed. Start spraying off the model. Build up in layers. Come back in. 
Again, I'm in a somewhat of an awkward position here. I like to support the airbrush with my finger here. Airbrushing is all about speed, distance, air pressure. Kind of like photography. With photography, you are painting with light. With airbrushing, you're obviously painting with air, speed, and distance. So we're gonna let that dry. Now, show you. See how fine we can go? Keep going. Move in a little bit. Just keep going. No clogging. We're letting our model dry out of frame. Let's do some dots. Now, if you hit the trigger, right, and you see a little bit of paint coming off, and no, it, a little bit of paint comes off your tip, just take a Q-tip and just very carefully just wipe any paint. That's a little bit of residual on there. It's not clogging, but basically what's happening is air is coming out. If you've got your, this is a double action, so if your a trigger is forward and you press down, you get air, right? When you pull back, you get paint. But if you have a little bit of paint, on your, your needle here, right? When that air comes through, even though there's no paint coming through, the air will blow off anything, any residual paint that might be on the needle. So if you're in doubt, you can just kind of wipe that off, right? So here's our, here's our plane again. It's in the, you can already see that it's drying. So again, one more little test. And we'll just go in and Again, I'm not right over the work like you would normally be. I'm at a pretty extreme angle here just for the di video demonstration. All right, it's pretty good. Let's uh, take a look at that uh, reference there. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit further. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna let this dry. All right, I see a little void there. You can go in there. All this paint will self-level. It's a nice, beautiful, durable finish. You should have a nice little eggshell uh, sheen to it. You can already kind of see it there where it's drying. Let's clean the airbrush. Same methods as before. Got our spray bottle, pure water. Always recommend cleaning the airbrush between every color change right away. I'm gonna open up the Mac valve. I'm gonna open up the preset handle. Okay, so I get a nice, powerful stream of air coming through just for cleaning. Don't forget, we've removed our crown cap, so be cautious of your needle. I'm just gonna wipe out any, you know, extra around the, there, okay. You can hear there's nothing coming through, but there is still water. There is still residual in there. Always remember that. A little bit of thinner, swirl it around. It just drops, see? Essentially, that's just a cavity it's worth. All right, spray a little through.
Now, if I take this piece of paper here, and show you, that's clean. That's all there is to it. No alcohol, no lacquer thinner, no windshield wiper fluid, no universal thinners. It's not necessary at all. So all you gotta do is water and then follow a few drops of Mission Models thinner just to flush the water out and to get rid of any residual paint. And if you're in doubt, you can just take a Q-tip, wipe that out, make sure there's no uh, lint or cotton strands from the Q-tip. Um, and that's all there is to it. So the next color will be a gray and we'll continue on to the 109. All right, let's do that. And we're back. So what we've done so far, gray primer, RLM 76. We sprayed our uh, RLM 74. And we're gonna move on to RLM 75 Grau Violet, okay? We used a Harder and Steenbeck Infinity with a 0.15 needle and nozzle. So now, again, we are going to add RLM 75 using the same airbrush. Again, we've replaced the crown cap just so we didn't damage the needle by accident. Just in passing, we're gonna remove it, all right? Now, we're gonna mix the paint again. Okay, same method as before, but we'll do it again. Shake it up. You can use a, uh, a glass marble in here. And we're gonna do 30 drops of paint in a one ounce mixing cup. Okay, thinner, six drops, seven drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, eh, seven. Good measure. Paint is very, very forgiving. Poly, we're gonna go about six, seven drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Just stir it up there. We like to just kind of swirl it like this, but again, like I said earlier, you can just take a mixing stick or whatever and do that. All right, airbrush, Mac valve, close it. Okay, there's no air coming through. No air, no paint. We like the epoxy mixing cups also because you can squeeze them and you can just put in as much paint as you need. I'm gonna crack it open quarter of the way as a starting basis just to see where our you can see that we have a little bit of thinner and whatnot in there. So we've cleared that out with paint. Doing some little test shots, right? Okay, I'm gonna close this just a tad, just because. Everybody's airbrush is different. We're using this to show you how paint can be sprayed through ultra fine airbrushes. All right, always start off the work. And we're gonna start with the front part of the cowl. Now we've got some reference that's sort of off the screen here. sort of on an angle here, so again, it's a little bit hard. When you spray on an angle, you can end up with a little bit of overspray on your adjacent colors because of the angle. But in the previous video, we realized that we kind of blocked the shot and it was hard to see, so we're trying to go from a different angle this time. And everything we do here, is on the fly, unscripted. If you see a mistake, it's as it happens. And again, it's not about accuracy, it's just about using the paint and the workflow. Okay. Let's see if we can't get in here. All right, putting the airbrush down. Paint's wet, I don't wanna get my thumb in there somehow or another. Okay, just a quick 
one more quick little test to make sure our pattern is good. Hope we don't blow the model off the table. We'll start here. It's all about your speed and your distance. Don't necessarily try and cover everything in one pass. Okay, so it's basically no overspray. All right. So we're gonna move along. It's a very precarious setup here. It could roll right away anytime. One more test. And we're gonna start. Sometimes they have a gray, a gray spot up here. And you can see, because all the paint is triple pigmented, get a little in here. All right. Bring it down a bit. Nice straight, clean needle and nozzle setup. Before you get to your next one, test again. So let's get a little bit of. I'm gonna start down on this end, so hopefully you can see it as I, I, all right. Let's prop that up a bit. I know it's gonna move. Right. Get out of the way. Again, I'm on an angle, so. Probably get a little overspray there. And this is what I like to call sort of the adolescent stage because, you know, it's only kind of just coming together. You haven't done any weathering, add any additional colors in there. Get in there nice and tight. Yeah, it's starting to look good. Okay, so now watch this. We're gonna do a quick color change. Let's open that up a bit. Back to the work. Hopefully we have a little bit of green here somewhere. All right, this has been sitting out for a minute. So again, let's quickly mix up a little bit of green, okay? Now this is to show you how you can pretty much eyeball it once you're used to it, right? Very quick, very, very easy. know just by looking, right? All right. We've closed the MAC valve. We're gonna take our paint, our green, put it back in a little bit in there. 
again. We're gonna crack it open about a quarter of the way. You'll see we're gonna have some residue in there. See how it's a little spider webby and whatnot? And as we, we flush that through, the paint goes back to the way it should be. That's because we had extra fluid and residue in the chamber here that was hanging out and sprays through with the paint. So let's just test. Okay, look at that. Nothing complex. Very easy. Okay. Go in here, spray off the work. One more test. Add some contrasting colors. When in doubt. Okay, so it looks like we've got a little bit of residue on there. Okay. Green, Grau Grun. What was that? Uh, sorry. That's Grau Valia. It says uh, RLM 74. Let's get a little in here. And I'm on an angle so you can see. You know, the thing about it is these planes, camouflage, and whatnot, it's pretty awesome. All right, just a tad. Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. No clogging. See, watch. All right. Let's clean out the airbrush. I know we've already shown this. Sometimes just being repetitive. It's the way to go. And we've done a few colors here, so I'm just just for good measure. Just gonna kind of wipe a little bit out. A little thinner. Open up the Mac valve, go wide open. Clean, All right? Now, if you're gonna wipe down your, your airbrush, you see we've got the needle sticking out here. Let's put the crown cap back on because you will bend it, guaranteed, if you don't protect it. Be careful, always clean your tools. A clean airbrush is a happy airbrush, a happy modeler. And you should not have any types of issues. Okay, that's clean. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to spray some yellow. Just a little bit on the front end of the cowling. All right. Okay. So we've sprayed our yellow. It's really not dry. You can see how it's shiny and it's still kind of wet, but it's drying. And we're just going to kind of keep, we're going to just continue to go. But the paint is actually in the in process uh, of drying. Okay. So we're going to move forward. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, get rid of this so we don't have any accidents. But um, paint, we'll start with the new, fresh, uh, clean work area here. And a lot of times when I do this type of, of work here, modeling and, and, and so forth, I like to go back uh, with the base color and just kind of get in there and maybe just clean things up, carve it out a little bit, you know, just muck around a bit. So what I've done is I've added some of our RLM 76 back into the airbrush. Again, we're using the Infinity with a .15. We cleaned the yellow out real quick off camera. And so I'm just gonna test. I've closed the uh, Mac valve. I'm gonna crack it back open just a bit and get a little test shot here, just to make sure that the spray pattern is good and that I'm happy with it, the paint is consistent, 
before I go back to the model. So now I'm gonna go back in here and just add, you know, just a little bit of, just very carefully, just some RLM 76. Maybe just create some separation, maybe refine uh, some things a little bit here and there for the fun of it. Because the paint is triple pigmented, it will cover a lot of these areas very quickly. Get some refinement. It's very subtle. You may not see anything happening, but believe me, it is. I feel like I'm a little bit concentrated up here in some of the grays. I'm just kind of clean it up a bit. And again, I'm on an angle and an extreme angle, just so you guys can see. Typically, I'd be right on top of the work, and supporting the airbrush with my finger, my thumb over here. Gives you that kind of extra control. As the blue dries, it'll start to uh, blend in there a bit with the rest of it. Just to It's about using your best judgment, really, in your style and technique. I feel like I should bring some of the gray down here a little bit more. So we're just gonna clean this out real quick. We're not even gonna stop, gonna watch the flow here. All right. Yes, we have a little bit of paint in there. Right. We'll go straight into the gray. Okay. All right, let's go. Test it. Now you're gonna see when I spray through, I probably have residual in here, a little bit. Got the gray still mixed up. Pour a little bit in there. Whoops. Again, test, because we had water and thinner in there. Let's close the MAC valve again. Touch anything up up here. Now's the time. Again. You can see our yellow is still drawing. Let's turn it over. Test one more time. I think I'm gonna increase my air pressure just a tad and just very carefully remove any kind of residual. Very carefully do that. Okay.
All right. That's that's what we've got. So what we can now do is we're going to clean the airbrush again. One last very quick time. I know you guys have seen us do this over and over and over again, but we're just I want you just to see how that is just kind of a reminder and just drill at home. We'll grab a fresh Q-tip. All right, just for good measure. But look, there's really nothing on there. Okay. It's clean. I'm gonna put the crown cap back on. You can spray with or without it. And, whoops, excuse me. We're gonna pull the trigger back. Good as new, ready for your next session. So the last thing we're gonna do in this demo real quick is we're gonna do a very, very quick wash, but we are gonna do some dedicated wash videos. But let's just do it to kind of finish this up. Be right there. Alrighty, so we have, uh, we've gone primer, base coat, and a couple other colors here, yellow, green, gray, so forth to get us where we are. We did a little bit of masking and, and, and so forth. This has all been in real time. The actual paint process has been a total of, honestly, about 20, 30 minutes, give or take. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a very quick wash. We will be doing uh, a video dedicated to washes, but since we're here, we'll do a quickie. All right, to kind of tie it all together. So what we're gonna do is one ounce epoxy mixing cup, Mission Models Thinner, okay, 30 drops. We know where the 30 drop mark is. If you, When you make this and you count it out, you'll know uh, it's graduated, so it's about at the eighth inch mark or so. Okay, a little bit more, all right. Okay, so Thinner. One of our favorite colors for doing washes is MMP040 Tire Black. Another one, great one is uh, Rail Tie Brown. But Tire Black is a very neutral color. It has a little bit of greens, little browns, little this and that, and it, it, it's very hard to explain. It's got a little gray in it. So, all right, the way we do this is we say 30 drops of thinner, six drops of paint. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? Swirl it up. Okay? Now, the next thing, water. Just straight, same water, or just go over to your sink. It's a one ounce epoxy mixing cup. We're gonna fill this carefully so we don't splash on our model. I wouldn't usually do it here. To the half ounce mark. All right. And I think we're almost at the half ounce mark. All right, it's about a half ounce. Well, we've got thinner, paint, water. Water fills the rest of the half ounce mark. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, since we've got some splashes and whatnot, I'm gonna move this, and I'm gonna start with a relatively clean surface. We don't have any clear coats on here, nothing. I like to use a liner brush. Our panel lines. See that? In my opinion, it's much better. What some people call a slush wash, and covering the whole model and then cleaning it all back. This is acrylic on top of acrylic. It's all in real time. Turn it around because I want to start here. Touch it to the panel line. It flows just like an oil. No mess. Quick. Easy. Just see it flow. I'm 
going fast. See that? See that flow? Now you see how the whole model is starting to kind of pop? And again, it's, it's a little bit awkward because of my position here, but we're doing it. clean up any overflow. Another thing I like to do is I'll take a cotton swab here sometimes, right? Or a lot of times I'll just, I'll steady my hand. No cleanup is required. Quick, efficient, easy. If you already use Mission Models paints, you have all your washes at your fingertips. So I'll take one of these and I've just soaked up any excess. Let's move along. Pick up a little bit more. acrylic on acrylic. Another thing you can do if you want to is you can clear coat this with our semi-gloss, let that dry, then you can do your washes over that and protect your paint and then you can take micro mesh at about, I don't know, maybe like 8,000 grit, 3,600 grit, right? Once everything's said and done and, and you can just lightly wet sand over all your panel lines and clean up any excess that you might not be happy with. We didn't clear coat anything here so we're not going to wet sand it yet and honestly a lot of this is just dry to the touch so it's not 100% scientifically and chemically cured yet. See that flow? A little excess. Just wipe that away. No enamels, no lacquers, no toxins, no smells. This wash is purely Mission Model Thinner, six drops of paint, and then water straight from the tap to the halfway mark in your epoxy mixing cup. We can really start going crazy. See that? Quick, easy, efficient, family friendly. is needed. You can make them as dark, your washes as dark as you want. I love liner brushes. Gives you so much more control. They work. Less cleanup. You don't have to wipe everything back with enamels or you know thinners and whatnot. So you see we got a little excess in there. Let's see if we can't very quick look at that what makes modeling fun we take the struggle away make it easy for you details. You never want to use straight black. You want to use neutral colors. See, flowing right down that panel line. Just wipe it away. It's not lift 
lifting any of the paint. So we got a little bit of this here. I, can just, I just put a little water on, on the end here. Lightly remove it. Just wipe it away. See that? Just wiping away any excess. Not even lifting the paint. Look at that. Just clean that up right there. See, we've got some excess down here underneath. All right. And I'm going to, off the camera, I just put a little water on the end of this swab with a nice gentle touch. Okay. Just light. Start to remove that. Clean. Clean, clean, clean. Look at that. Right? So, in other words, if you were to put a semi-gloss, not gloss, but semi-gloss over the whole model, then do your washes, then you could go in and you could, once the semi-gloss is dry, you do your washes, then you can go in and just lightly wet sand it away with the 3600 grit, 6000, 8000, 4000, you know, micro mesh, and you're just basically cleaning up any excess without removing anything from the panel lines. We could also start doing streaking, right? Um, let's use... Actually, let's see what happens if we... I know it's going to happen, but I'm just saying. Let's do a little bit on this yellow. Not much in the way of panel lines there, but well, there's a little bit. They're a little shallow. wiped it away at the back of my pinky. Want to be careful since we don't have a barrier coat and I don't really want to stain the yellow per se. That can all happen later. When you do the wipe away, if you have, you know, residual paint or wash on the tip, as you wipe it away, you might spread things elsewhere. So basically, that's uh, a quick introduction to washes. See how concentrated it is. And you might have to just adjust, you know, as needed. But that's our basic starting point. 30 drops of paint, six drops, no, I'm sorry, let me start that over, I take it back. 30 drops of thinner, six drops of paint, and water, again, to the halfway mark in a one ounce epoxy mixing cup. The more you do this, the easier it is. It's easy from the get-go, but, uh, it'll quickly become second nature. There's no need to buy additional products, enamel products, lacquer products, pre-made washes. It's already here for you. We've got it. You've got it. If it's on your bench, you've got it. It's that quick, that easy. We can just kind of wipe things away, got a little water in there. Voila. There's our uh, half a fuselage. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's all about having fun. Model building is problem solving. Nothing will do it for you, but we're here to help you. Guide you along, help you think outside the box. Stay within the mission model system. Don't stray. And just keep practicing, keep painting. It's about having a good time. And uh, we've got a lot more videos uh, you know, to come. We'll show you some great tips, techniques, tricks, whatever. All right, guys, that's it. Have a good time. Bye.